Hello again, it's uh, Simon Murray here, owner of SM Designs and Airbrush Paint Direct with a quick video uh, addressing uh, probably one of our main tech questions as to what products to spray when you're directly working on metal, uh, fiberglass, wood, plastic, glass, or even leather. So in this quick video, I'm just going to be showing you the various products you want to use depending on what surface you're actually going to be working on. First up we're going to look at metal, both aluminium and mild steel and the preparation is pretty much similar for both surfaces. I'm just using an alcohol based pre-cleaner, a decreaser and just giving them a quick wipe here using a scotch Bright pad. You, uh, you notice I'm wearing gloves, very very important in particular when you're working with mild steel. You really do not want to touch that mild steel or you will begin to rust immediately. Not so bad with aluminium but I'm just using a tack rag here now. And I'm coming in with my first product, which is going to be Autoborn Sealer. The Autoborn Sealer for aluminium has a desired effect in a sense that it does not oxidize aluminium. So I can just spray directly onto it. In this case, I want to keep the integrity of the design, the swirls. So I'm using Transparent Sealer, and that's part number 6000. And you can see I've got a nice matte surface. And what I can do now at this stage, I can come in with various designs or colors. I can use urethane based paint or water based paint as long as I've got that initial bond. Now we're going to look at mild steel which takes a different uh, process and I'm going to use a self -pri etching primer. Uh, it's an acid based etch primer uh, available from any motor factor, any jobber and typical mixing ratio but not always, typical mixing ratio is one to one. So I'm just going to spread it on now and it's designed to attack, I use that term loosely, but it's designed to attack the metal and it actually corrodes and eats into it, it's a self etching primer. Uh, typically two coats, pretty quick flash off time, it'll dry in 10-15 minutes. And once I've got those two coats on, I can free come in now with a base paint. In this case I'm just using Autoborn Cedar White. Typically two to three coats of any base coat will cover a self etching primer. And once I've got those initial coats on, then I'm ready to come in with my, my airbrushing. Uh, in this case, uh, I'm using Wicked colors, but th this video is not about the actual airbrushing of the custom painting. It's about getting the right product onto the right surface. Now we're going to look at latex and leather. Now, whilst leather doesn't need any sanding or scuffing, it is very, very important to clean it, even if it's brand new leather. I'm just using an alcohol-based cleaner. It's actually the same cleaner that I use for metal or any other surface, but no matter how many times I wipe this, it's going to leave residue on my cloth. So please clean, clean, clean. Uh, I'm now going to use a 5092. It's Createx product flexible adhesion promoter. And it's a fantastic product for spraying on leather or latex or anything that's going to flex. Even after it's dry it always feels a little bit tacky, a little bit sticky to the touch and that's perfectly normal because it's not a paint, it's an adhesion promoter. It was designed to be painted over. This finish piece was painted by a friend of mine Tim Gore using his, his own line of paints, uh, the Createx Bloodline range and this was painted over the top of the Createx flexible adhesion promoter. Painting on the fiberglass is quite straightforward, but I've got two scenarios here. One is uh, raw fiberglass and one has been high build primed. I'll explain that in a little bit more depth in a minute. I've also got some carbon fiber here because the principle is exactly the same. So this is just neat fiberglass. There's the weaving and this is the gel coat. And onto that I simply paint Autoborn Sealer. Uh, the colors completely up to you. I just chose blue for this video for no particular reason but a quick scuff, give it a chemical clean and Autoborn Sealer directly straight onto it for a perfect bond. Now we're going to look at a uh, fiberglass that has been prepped with high build primer. The reason for that is if you've got a lot of heavy marks, a lot of scores, even the Autoborn Sealer won't iron those out so you may have to use a high build 2 pack primer. And the typical mixing ratio is 4 to 1. Not always, and again check with the manufacturer, but if you've got a lot of scores or defects in there, just spray it with a high build 2 pack epoxy primer. Sand it down with 600 wet and dry. And that's it, you're ready to come in now with your base paint, which in this case is just Autoborn Cedar Black. And I'm just using this for all out speed, adhesion, and as you can see, pretty insane coverage. So minor defects, Autoborn Cedar, heavy defects, grinder marks, manufacturing marks, high built primer. 
So now we're going to look at carbon fiber. Not too much to report here really. Uh, one thing you do need to be aware of when you're painting carbon is quite often you get little pit holes and I've seen that hundreds of times over the years. It just, uh, it's really just the nature of carbon fiber, those tiny, tiny little pinholes. So get it well cleaned, well degreased. And I'm just going to come in with a Sailor 6000. I mean, I'm assuming you'd want to keep the carbon look. Uh, why else would you be painting carbon fiber? So I'm just using clear, transparent Sailor. Typically, I would only apply two coats over carbon. You're not really asking it to do an awful lot. And that's it. That's really the perfect ground coat if you want to lay down a candy or whatever. Or indeed, just go straight in with your clear. The Sailor 6000 will give you the perfect ground coat for that. A lot of people have problems getting paint to stick to plastic and that's really because they're using the wrong products. I've got a few different types of plastics here, uh, Lexan, ABS, Zenoy, and really I don't distinguish terribly between them. The main thing is the preparation and the product you're using. The first myth I want to dispel that is really, really important and that is, especially when you're painting Lexan bodies for you RC guys out there, do not use soapy water. The only thing you wash with soapy water is your hands, okay? Always, always clean plastic, in particular Lexan, with alcohol. Now I'm just going to come in the inside, I'm reverse painting this Lexan, and I'm using a red scotch Bright. I find a grey a little bit light, and I find a red a little bit coarse, so I typically always have a worn red line about, which is perfect for painting Lexan. Now I'm just going to use a tack rag, and just remove any dust and I'm going to come in with Old Faithful, which is a transparent sealer 6000. Obviously, I'm reverse painting, so I do need to have uh, transparent paint. I'm using Autoborn Sealer 6000, and literally one coat. I only need one fairly light coat, and I'll have a fantastic bond here. Coming in with my colour, in this case, uh, Sparkalescent Sun Gold, and just building up several coats. Once I've got the colour representation I want, I'm just coming back in with my Autoborn Sealer. In this case, I'm just colour coating with orange. Uh, of course, I could use white. I could even use black, but I'm just using orange on orange. And that'll just give me, uh, just give me the depth, the colour I'm really after. And you can see this colour a little bit better in the light here. Now I'm going to paint the outside of a shell and I've used a particularly nasty piece of Lexans, probably the most flimsiest shell I've ever used in my life. Uh, but the principle is exactly the same. Chemically clean that thing with alcohol, uh, worn red scotch bright, and I'm just coming in with Autoborn Sealer White to give me that initial bond. And subsequent colour in this case just happens to be fluorescent yellow. And I'm just going to chase a little bit of fluorescent green into that yellow just really for the hell of it but the point I'm trying to make is that I've got that initial bond with the transparent sealer I've painted over five maybe six hundred Lexan speed shapes for various shows in the US and in Europe I've had them damaged in transit I've had them actually break and smash but I've never had the paint feel once if you come across some really problematic plastics, like wax and juice plastics, you can use 7040 Adhesion Promoter, which is another step up again. But 99 times out of 100, I'll just use Autoborn Sealer. When it comes to painting wood, what really determines what product you use is whether the wood is natural or engineered. So I'm going to look at engineered wood first, and by that I mean plywood or MDF. And what I'll use here is Autoborn uh, Sealer, typically Autoborn Sealer White, and I can just paint directly onto the engineered wood. Now you see it's killing the cover, the, the actual color of the wood. However, you can still see the texture, the pattern, the grain. So if you really want to lose that, the Autoborn Sealer just is not going to have enough build, in which case you might want to use like a brush paintable MDF primer. Now the Autoborn Sealer itself is brushable if you want that extra pigment load on you really want to hide uh, any discrepancies in the wood so whilst I usually spread it is brushable and of course when it's dry it's completely sandable 
When I'm painting on solid wood, I'll always use Scenic SSR Clear. And I really do that for several reasons. I mean, one, it's a beautiful color restore, as you can see here. Uh, it's very, very easy to apply. But to be honest, the main reason why I would use that would be to prevent tanning, especially in prevalent uh, timbers like oak and walnut, where tanning is a problem, especially if you're using candy, and it really does stop that. Also, too, it leaves the timber very, very fine. You don't get those little micro fibers rising that you do with traditional sealants. So I'm just coming in here and I'm going to paint a, a little bit of scenic over the top of the, these are bowls are actually turned by a friend of mine Peter Lyons and he's done a little bit of artwork on here and I'm just going to come in with the matte uh, you can use matte satin or gloss I just favor the matte whenever I'm generally sealing things and one coat is fine maybe if you're going to be using a candy doing a candy wash I would use two coats to really seal that in There's very few surfaces tougher to spray on than glass, really for the obvious reasons. Very, very tough and slick and unforgiving. Uh, again, spraying on glass, I would go with the Scenic SSR Clear, but I would definitely put 4015 Cross Linker in there. It really needs that Cross Linker for extra adhesion. And this is just a piece of glass, a mirror technically, and I haven't even prepped it. All I'm doing is just spraying uh, two light coats of matte scenic over the top. Uh, I'm using matte because the gloss obviously you wouldn't even see it for the purpose of this video. But also uh, the matte is really nice if you're going to replicate frosted glass or etched glass. I mean the gloss is fine if you want to come in with subsequent colors but as I say I'm, for the purpose of this video just to demonstrate it I'm using matte and after no time at all really maybe two three initial hours curing time you can see I can aggressively mask over the top of this. I guarantee you will have no peel issues or no delamination issues when painting on glass if you use the Scenic with the 4015. Finally, we're going to look at fishing lures and I've pretty much just clumped them all in here. We've got lead, uh, plastic, various types of plastic, and of course those little super flexible rubber guys that are a nightmare to paint and we tend to do a lot of tech questions for. Starting off with the lead, no big surprises here, just auto born cedar with 15 or 16 colors to choose from. I'm just using white here. Um, the uh, Autoborne Cedar Silver is actually a nice ground coat for subsequent aluminiums if you're looking for those real metallic -y lures. But just moving on to these little guys here, and I, when you're painting these, um, from the outset they're a bit of a nightmare, but they're actually fine. You're just going to use 1592, the uh, flexible adhesion promoter. I mean, you can spray leotards with this, so it's going to be fine on those little fishing lures. Uh, just give them one or two super light coats. You really don't want to float it out here. Just keep it nice and light with about a 15 minute flash off time between coats. And then that's it. You're free just to come in with whatever color or effect paints you want to apply over the top of that. Uh, and the plastic again, just treat the plastic the same. The plastic, the wood, the, the metal lures, treat them all exactly the same. Just auto-born sealer. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope this video has helped you guys a little bit when you're painting direct on the substrates. For any more information, please check out our website, smdesigns.co.uk and airbrushpaintdirect.com.